Hello, I'm your host Candace Blanks and welcome to NDTV and Network Mother's Day Special Edition where I have some awesome ladies on here who's going to talk to you more about how it is to be a mother. We'll be right back. Welcome back again. I'm your host and if you're just now tuning in, we have some awesome ladies here who I'm about to introduce to you. We have Miss Audrey Brooks, Miss Lady V, and Evangelist Sandra Jones who are going to talk to all the mothers out there. So if you're a mother, please get other mothers and tune in. So we're going to first start with Miss Evangelist Sandra Jones. How you doing today? Thank you for coming on today's show. I'm great. I'm great. It's a pleasure to be here and to encourage other women that yes. who are mothers to encourage them that they can keep going even though struggle come, even though pain come, even though discouragement is sometimes there that they can still have the faith to keep moving and be empowered. Awesome. Awesome. And that is the reason for today's show is to empower mothers out there who might have been given up, who have um, became discouraged. This show is for you. So, Miss Sandra, oh my goodness. See, we've been knowing each other for a while now. Yes, <laughs> and just knowing your strength, because I have watched you and you are a strong woman. <laughs> and just to watch you raise children by yourself, what? Tell us more about that. What? What kind? What struggles have you had raising children by yourself? Well, the strength I know I get from my mom because I watched her raise us as children, and I've seen how. Even though my dad was in the house, I've seen how she, as a mom, took the extra step to take care of us. Dad would bring the money home. That's it. But after that, then it was all her. Get the groceries, pay the bills, make sure we're ready for school, make sure we're doing the things that we're supposed to do because dad, a lot of time, wasn't there. Mm -hmm. So even though she was married, to me, it's, it's like she was a single mom because she did everything. Everything yeah. came from her. So during my journey, when I had my first kid, even as a high school student, uh, I was a junior in high school, and that was the first, I don't want to call it a mistake, but it happened. God allows things to happen for a reason. So at, so at that point, I took on that strength, uh, making sure that Rosalind was taken care of, making sure she had what she need. And when, as soon as I graduated high school, I was out of there. I was out of my mom's house. I moved in my own place. And a lot of times my dad would say, well, how did you get this? And how did you do that? I never took on, uh, depended on them to do things for me. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, I just took that strength that I saw in her and was imparted in me. And I ran the race that was set before me. And so the other children came. I was in Mississippi until the year of 2000. And before I moved here, like I said, I was in my own place. And um, there were several times there, there was no food in the house. The bills had to be paid, mm -hmm. um, and I was working, you know, and still the ends were not meeting. But I had to trust God, even though I didn't have a, I didn't yeah. know what it meant to have a relationship with God. But I knew that He existed, yes. right. and I knew that if I was going to make it, I had to rely on Him and not myself, right. and not depend on my parents. Let me interject just for a moment. You were a high school mother. Yes. Who said, hey, listen, I got to take on the responsibility of raising a child in your teenage years. So I know there might be some mothers out there that the same boat as you, high school mothers, they're mm -hmm. now raising their children. Um, what would you say to a young lady who is in high school and about to become a mother? Two part question. And what would you say to those mothers who, ha who necessarily don't have the strength that you did trying to raise that. Yes. yes. Okay. So if you are uh, a high school student and you are pregnant and about to give birth to uh, a child, just know that you can do it. 
Um, I know there's a lot of naysayers, there's a lot of negative talk uh, because it happened. Things happened and God allowed them to happen. Mm -hmm. So if you have, you're in that position, just know that you have to seek God. Keep your face yes. before God. And not only that, just like my cousin right here, Miss Audrey Brooks, you know, she has a foundation. She has an organization that helps young women from, you know, from their past to their future to help you get going. Just know that there's help available for you. You don't have to do it alone like I did. Yes. Because when I coming up, it was pretty much like you don't go to somebody else and tell them your problems, right. your issues, and what's going on. Yes. But it's different now. You can you have someone that you can go to and talk to and find out what it is that you need to do. You don't have to stay in the dark. You don't have to be uh, have low self-esteem because it happened. Mm -hmm. That's a big no-no. Right. If right. you you have that child, you go back to school, you get you a part-time job, you, you can do it. Just put your faith yes. in God and keep moving. Amen. And also, if you have so, and you're in that position, you have those kids. Your second part question. Yes. Listen, if you don't have that strength, you just know you do. It's in you. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> it's in you. Yes. It's in you. Stop saying, I can't do this. I can't do that. That is negative thinking. You have mm, to think positive. Right. Right. Sit down and begin to write out your life. Just yes. that period. Yes. Yes. Begin to think. The things that you want to do, it's time to do it step by step. If that's you going back to school, then you need to set up a plan in place that to uh, I, God, I want to go back to school. Yeah. So find Miss Audrey. Like I said, somebody in your community will show you, or in your school system will show you. Okay, you can go back to school. Okay, you have the child. Uh, there's child care help. What yes. help do you need? You don't know how to fill out the paperwork. Listen, I'll show you how to fill out the pa paperwork. I'll help you do it yes. so that you can get the proper child care that you need. Yes. So you won't have to worry about where the child is going while you're going to school. Yes. The help is out there. Oh man, amen. I love it. Oh my goodness. I'm telling you, the help is out there. You heard it from Evangelist Sandra Jones. The help is out there. She did it. She said, hey, I'm going to take on the responsibility of raising my child and, and, and providing for that child everything that she needed and the future children that she had. You have how many children, Miss Sandra? Five. Five, Five children as a single mother. And she did it. And as you can see, let me tell you a little bit about Evangelist Sandra. She's not just an evangelist, but she works in so many different things. She has her yes. own show, Me Table Talk. And I'm telling you, oh my goodness, she is anointed. She talks about everything that, that might happen and God just moved mightily through her to, to just help out everybody that might need her help in any given moment she's a, a heart of gold and trust me if she can do it you can too now we're going to move to this beautiful lady right here can i say i want to interject something go ahead right Miss Sandra. because i didn't talk about um the parent part oh y'all was okay. coming back to that yeah, now because you yeah. know you think that your parents are upset with you and they yes. may be they may be because it happened but just know that they still love you, even though they, you, you have the child, you're pregnant, it happens, and mm -hmm. they're upset, but still know that they love you. They do love yes. you, and they, sometimes they just don't know how to express it. Mm -hmm. So yes. it's not a time mm -hmm. to just take off and run away and do all these crazy things. No, stay where you, you have a roof over your head. Stay where you, mm, you know, good, where good advice. And, and work it out with your parents. Yes. Just work it out. Yes, mm -hmm. and, and, and to those, those parents, if you feel like your child has disappointed you, or you feel like I didn't, I didn't teach my child um, that way, but just know, right. forgive. Yes. Right. Forgive yes. your children, because yes. your child needs you. You. Mm -hmm. you know, and so at that moment, that child might have hurt your heart because you wanted to see your child go to school, go to college. Nothing that is over with, it just has to have a moment in time. And right now, that moment in time is not that moment, but it will happen. That's right. Yes. It will, will happen. happen. Mm -hmm. It's just not on your time. It's on God's time. Right. And evidently, that little baby didn't ask to be here, but that baby is yeah, here. Right. And now it's, it takes on you teaching your child how to be the mother that she needs yes. to be for that child. Yeah. And so let's move on. To this beautiful one right here, Miss <laughs> Lady V. Hi, you How you doing? I'm Thank doing you for good. coming on to this special edition 
for mothers. And I, I, God allowed me to handpick each individual here to come on today's show to talk about specific topics. And as you, as you heard earlier, Miss Sandra talked about the single mom side of it. Miss Lady V. Yes. <laughs> God picked me for you to talk about the blended side family. So those people who are out there and you are a blended family. So if you don't know what blended family means, that means your husband had children and you had children. <laughs> and you guys came together yeah, yeah. and you brought them together and now you're raising them together because it's not his children or her children, it's your children. Yeah, right. So Miss Lady B. Well, first of all, I want to thank the Lord for allowing this awesome opportunity. The reason why is because I want to take myself away. Mm. And what I mean by that is basically letting him flow through what he wants to say on today. Yes. And I want to thank you for obeying and listening to the voice because when she called me, I knew it was a appointed and divine, you know, thing for me to be here. And so I obeyed the voice, you know, because I was like, wait a minute. <laughs> Can I just call me out of nowhere? And she's like, I, I need you. I need you on the show. So I was like, oh, yes, Candace, yes. I told her, I said, you know, this is actually a topic that I was going to speak on whenever God provided that opportunity. So I want to thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. Thank <laughs> you for I thank, accepting. I thank the Lord for allowing me to be a part of this platform with you and the rest of these beautiful women here. I want to thank mm -hmm. God because he's awesome. Yes, he's awesome. He and, yes. you know, for him to bring this type of platform today the way that he did this, you know, yes. divinely bringing us all together to talk about these very touchy things that could be, to you know, uh, very touchy to some of us out here in the world. Um, a lot of us might not want to talk, but there's someone who will be willing to move forward to share that help. So, and that being said, um, yes, I actually, um, you know, um, ended up in a situation that I didn't understand. And yes, it took for me to have to trust the Lord. And what I mean by that, because a lot of times, you know, people don't understand what you mean, trust the Lord. Basically, my situation ended up being a situation where I actually played a part in having to be called by God to um, help, you know, in a situation. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it can seem kind of complicated, you know, because that's the way it seemed to me. Very complicated because you got your husband, then you have your children, you know, that you birth, and then there's other children so, right. so I'm like God you know what what is what is happening with this but to say you know um, I basically had to understand that when it came down to really really trusting who I needed to trust because it wasn't myself you know, a lot of times we might think that, you know, I know it all. I know what mm -hmm. I need to do in this situation. Oh, I'm just going to do this and do that. No, 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 no. All that pretty much basically got shut down. I had to really, really realize that God, you know, Jesus, you know, he's the way. He's the truth and he is the life. Mm -hmm. I needed all of that. And so with that being said, you know, to make a long story short, because my story, it has many, many more parts to it. But I want to basically just say that um, when I was going through, I had my own things that I was dealing with. And to actually, you know, had already been in a previous marriage. And, you know, my son was born, you know, through that marriage. And, you know, I was just out of high school, you know, and you know how that is, you know, when you you a young yeah. girl, you mm -hmm. you you're like, hey, you know, I'm I'm ready to be married because right. I believe this is what God is wanting me to do, mm -hmm. but not understanding that it comes, there's a lot more to that, oh, you know, yeah. than you being excited about marriage, yes. you know, um, you have to have the foundation, yes. you know, and I had to understand that, but what helped me is 
you know, having the foundation of people who love me. Mm. You know, they love me enough to tell yes. me the truth. Yes. Oh, yes. So some some of you might not have that. You know, we missed that part, you know, at the beginning. And that's why in the Lord's word, I had to take this down because the Lord gave me some messages um, that I needed to share. He said, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. He said, because thou mm. hast rejected the knowledge. He said, I will also reject thee. He said, that thou shall be no priest to me, mm. seeing thou hast forgotten the law of thy God. I will also forgive thy children. This mm. right here in Hosea 4 and 6, um, the Lord, you know, right there is basically saying to us that we forgot him. Mm. We cannot really um, train our children because we once all were children before. And the only way for us to really have that structure that we need in any relationship, yeah, we have to have that foundation. Yeah. If we don't have that foundation, then we all screw. Mm -hmm. I don't care what type of money you have. It doesn't matter how long it is. When it comes down to the creator, the one who created all humankind, says, look, I love you. I loved you first. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's important that you understand my knowledge and know that I loved you first. And when we understand that when God says that he's first, yeah. he's first. He's the beginning and he's the end. So let me stop you right there. So basically what you're saying is, and what I'm hearing both of you guys say is, the foundation is God, yes. is Jesus, your, your faith-based yes. foundation yes. to know that even though in your own strength, you can't do it. You can't do it. But with God, with God you can do all things. Is, is that what I'm hearing you saying? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Because yes. yes. I'm like, yes. I, every both of you guys saying the same thing, right? <laughs> it's basically saying, I couldn't do what I have done already no. without God. Thanks. Two out there, <laughs> if you're not getting excited, I'm going to get excited for you. Because let me tell you something. God is is the foundation being a single mom yes. being a blended mom yes. because for example for myself i was in both of these shoes here i was a single mom when i was going through my divorce with my first husband i became a single mom mm -hmm. i'm like lord i got two babies <laughs> yes i have to provide for these babies yes. what am i going to do guess what happened my mom, thank God for mothers, right? Yes. My mom is a praying mom. You know, and that's one of the questions I'm going to talk about later is the 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 examples our mothers yes. have set for us, mm -hmm. you know, uh, or whoever raised you set for you, right? Because my mom, I watched her go to get up at 4 o'clock in the morning. She went in that closet. She got on her knees, and she prayed for me and my brothers. I have five brothers. I watched that. I watched this. My mother do that for yes. me. So when I went through this challenge, I'm like, oh, Lord, I'm about to be a single mom. What, what do I need to do? And God mm -hmm. just brought back. What did your mom do? Right. Yes. She said, what did she do? <laughs> yes. Right? She, she, she went in there on her knees and she started praying. Yes. And so that same mother stepped up and said, Candace, listen, I'm going to help you out. My mom, I worked 120 hours a week. And didn't see my kids. I, it felt like I was visiting my own children as I was going through my divorce the first in my first marriage. Mm -hmm. And I was a single mom. And I was like, Mom, you know, she's like, Gary, I got you. You know? Mm -hmm. And she raised, well, basically was helping me raise my kids during that hard times. Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay, Lord, thank you. Mm -hmm. But then I got remarried. All right. <laughs> thank God for second, <laughs> second chances, right? Yeah. Got remarried. Now, my husband now had two kids. I had two kids. And now we're blended. Oh, Lord Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Lord, for helping me. Because yeah, when you got, because this is real, right? We, I, listen, real. Yeah. on this show, we're going to talk realness oh, to yeah. you. Because you can't, we can't talk any, uh, anything but real to you. Because right. when, when them children in them real, blended marriage say, you're not my mama. Come on. <laughs> Tell me what you're going to do, Miss P, Miss Miss Lady V. <laughs> Look, I'm calling her by a nickname, right? That's how long I've been knowing her. <laughs> Tell me, Miss Lady V, what, have, have that experience happened to you when, when you heard, you're not my mama? 
Well, look, this is the thing with that. I didn't have that type of situation to happen because okay. my daughter that was brought into the blended situation, yes. she was four. So I actually thought it was a blessing, you know, to have her because I was excited, you know, about a daughter. I'm like, wow, wow a daughter. But as she got older, you know, um, you know, there were some things, you know, that she had going on. And uh, I just knew that I had to reach deep down within myself, you know, and that's what I wanted to say was that having the blessing of being able to have someone else that loves you to tell you the truth. Yes. So I had the blessing of being able to hear about Jesus. I had the blessing of being able to be raised up to learn about how you're supposed to carry yourself, you know, not to right. say that everything was all peaches and cream, right. you know, because mm -hmm. I still had to understand for myself what it was that God was saying. I had mm. to be able to hear his voice. Mm -hmm. So in all that being said, um, Kayla, oh my God, she's she's a blessing, you know, um, but th there were some things, you know, and I knew she needed the love. I knew that she needed the help. So I had to die to myself, mm -hmm. you know. I couldn't look at it like, oh, okay, these attitudes, you know, oh, what's, you know, oh, okay, you know. So, I had to die, you know, because a so lot of... So you're telling me you had th this baby, you didn't birth. <laughs> you had to love her like your own. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Did y'all yes. hear that? That's right. She said she didn't birth her daughter. Right. But as you can hear her say, it's her daughter. That's right. Even though she didn't give birth to her, she said, I had to love her mm -hmm. like my own. But we're going to come back. And when we come back, we're going to talk to this <laughs> awesome woman right here, Miss Audra <laughs> Brooks, who's going to talk to us more about the two parent home and how. She raised her children. We'll be right back after these messages. Welcome back to this special edition of Mother's Day um, with these lovely women. If you're just now tuning in on NDTVN Network, we're talking about different areas of being a mother. We have the single mom, Miss Sandra Jones. We have the blended mom, Miss Lady V. And now coming up to the same parent home with Miss Audrey Brooks. Thank you, Miss Audrey, for coming on the thank show. Thank you, thank you. you I am so excited to be here <laughs> and to meet all of you. <laughs> my <laughs> cousin. Yes. Thank you for having me. And you're so welcome. Yes. Oh, man. Tell us more about yourself. I am uh, originally from Louisiana. I am a Christian counselor, uh, Brooks Counseling Services, and I have a nonprofit organization Women Empowering Women, mm. where we teach uh, women uh, tools for personal and professional development. So that's a little Ooh. about me. You have a full <laughs> love, Miss Audrey. Yes, I do. And yes, your do. mother. Yes, I'm a mother of three. A mother of three. So you got all of this going on as a mother of three. So tell me how you how you do it. Yeah. Uh, you know, a lot of times when people think uh, you have the mother and the father in the house, and the kids is just, oh, that's just icing on the cake. Mm. But mm -hmm. it it is, but then there are, you know, you talked about blended family. Mm -hmm. When a husband and wife come together, they are blended right. mm -hmm. because they are coming from two different backgrounds. Okay, okay. come and teach that's us now. Come on now. So uh, very very with that. You come from, uh, let's just use my husband as an example. Uh, he comes from a family of three two sisters and him. He's the youngest, the yes. only boy. So already you see issues in that, right? Mm. Okay. Wow. I'm the seventh of 12 kids. Woo! Yes. Yes. Yeah, that's a big difference. <laughs> yes. He was raised in a, a same mom, same dad household. Okay. I was raised in a household where my dad was not present. So already you have uh, feelings and thoughts that are different. Right? Oh, yes. Because I'm living in a household where I'm not connected with my dad. Mm. So 
my environment and my thinking is already different. Mm. And you have him where he's very, you know, his parents are well to do. Mama, can I have? Sure you can. You know, mm. you, I come from 12. Mama, can I have? We'll see. Right. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> so when you, wow. when you bring that together with your family, then, you know, um, because I did not have as much. So when my daughter's like, Mama, can I have? Yeah, let's just make it happen. You know, mm. because I'm trying to give what I ha didn't what have. What you didn't have. Yes. Have to, excuse said, me, hold on, wait a minute. <laughs> How many of you out there that are just like Miss Audrey, you didn't have it growing <laughs> up, and now you're giving it to your children just because you didn't have it? I know I'm guilty yeah. of it. Because I did the same thing, like 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 with our children, both me and my husband, we didn't have it. Two different backgrounds, didn't have it, and now we're trying to give everything we didn't have to our children. What is the my question to you with that? And so you can get back to your, what you were talking about. What is what is wrong with that? First, there's a couple of things wrong with it. Uh, as husband and wife, you need to communicate what the plans are for the children. What was right? that word? Yeah. Communicate. communicate. <laughs> yes. Communicate. Okay. That means talking to each other. Right. <laughs> because you have to stand together so that the church can see mm -hmm. that you are together. together. Because if not, that's when the uh, comes in. They plan mom against dad. Mm -hmm. Ooh, oh That's oh the second thing. And also you're not teaching them core values. Right. So when they get older, that generational curse mm -hmm. is just going to keep going. Right. Keep right. going. Right. Come on now. So I'm sorry. you have to make sure that your kids understand, yes, I have it, but it does not mean you have it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Or you need it. That's right. good. That's <laughs> good. <laughs> yes. So... In that case, it took me some years to get there because, you know, once you grow up in a certain environment, you don't automatically just come out of that environment. That's what it right. It takes healing. Mm. It takes you seeking God. Mm -hmm. Because in our family, once we became one in Christ, mm. then things began to shift. Yes. That's right. Because first of all, you know, when you leave home, even though you were raised in a Christian home, once you get out on your own, you're like, oh, I'm living in life. Yeah. <laughs> you know, God I'm is praying, still praying. there, yes. but he's not the center of your life. Mm -hmm. wow. So good. therefore, when me and my husband uh, came together, we decided that we wanted our foundation to be built on Christ. Mm -hmm. Yes. That's when the communication started. Mm. That's when the planning started. Mm. That's when uh, we realized that we could do nothing without Christ. Right. Amen. We had oh, to wow. move in the way that he told us to go. That's right. It was not uh, our plans, but his plans. Awesome. Another, uh, awesome. another well-said statement, the foundation. Mm -hmm. Yes. Once once you and your husband became one with God, then that's when the communication mm -hmm. started. And, and I love it when you said that when me and my husband got married, we became blended. Mm -hmm. So, so you, so, so to all of those married couples out there that think that's gonna be peaches and cream, <laughs> come on. When you married your spouse, but just remember, you got a different background yeah. as your spouse, and you're trying to bring what you got taught when you were younger, right. and you got taught when you were younger mm -hmm. together. Yeah. And yeah. so now you're bringing both sides together, and now you got children in the mix. Which side are you gonna choose, mm -hmm. or are you gonna create your own environment? Right, 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 and that's when you have to decide. It's not his environment, your environment, but it's the environment that Christ created. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. Come on yeah. now, Mrs. <laughs> Audrey. Man, right. did y'all hear that's that? Right. <laughs> so it doesn't matter if you're a single mom, right. a blended mom, a mom with the same two parents household. You still have to set an environment of Christ mm -hmm. in it.
so that the the communication, the understanding in each area could be touched because a lot, what's, what's going on right now is that a lot of people are allowing the world to raise their children. Oh Your children oh is getting raised by the teacher, the daycare worker, oh the everybody, the neighbor. No, your children need to be raised by you yeah. in your home with your foundation how do i know that because i look at my children they're getting <laughs> older they're growing up and and i look at them and say okay lord do they got more of you in them or more of the world mm -hmm. <laughs> right. Right? right right so who are raising your children so let's talk about single mom oh miss sandra what as a single mom, what are some of the challenges that you had to endure raising your children up? And speaking of the world, raising your children up, pour, pouring into them at home Christian values and beliefs and foundations, and then sending them out into the school system, into the world. What What are some of the challenges that? Um, well, the challenges that, that I came up against. Uh, and still come up against even now because the older are older now, the younger are coming up now. Yes. So the struggle that I have dealt with is um, similar to what you said, you know, that, you know, they see other kids with certain things mm -hmm. and name brand type stuff mm -hmm. that, you know, that they want. And I'm like, you know what? I have your sister, your older sister can tell you, I have never brought you up like that. I, I didn't bring them up like that. The her or the older two boys never have I brought them up that way. Is there anything with them ha wrong with them having it? No, mm -hmm. that's fine with me. But I taught them values. Yeah. I taught them budget. Mm -hmm. I taught them that just because it has a name on it doesn't mean you have to have it. Mm. Right. Right. You know, there are other good quality things out there that people don't know about because right. it doesn't have a name brand. Yes. You right. know, so the way I dealt with that struggle is they would see me some in the morning, or they would hear me. My niece Raven, she joked about it just a couple days ago. She said, Auntie, she sent me a Mimi. She said, Auntie, this year you remember this? Because she used to stay with me. And she, and she sent me the Mimi where the mom was up 3, 4 in the morning. She was praying and she was laying hands. <laughs> about it but I still do it yes so they grew up the older ones grew up yes Frederick um, Spanky we call him Spanky his name is Dijon Roslyn they knew they grew up with me walking the floors early in the morning so right. I stopped the struggle of the mouth mm -hmm. don't do this don't do you can't have this that, that's that. good I said oh no I'm not doing it yes you know I'm, I need to stay in good health yeah I don't need the stress I don't need the headaches yes. so I took everything to prayer Yes. So I walked the floors early in the morning, I prayed, I got on my knees and I prayed it. And then I would actually teach them, show them, especially Raza. We would go into the store and she was like, Mom, I want this. And I'm like, okay, well, how much is it? She said, I don't know, we'll take it back. Mm -hmm. If you don't know how much it is, mm -hmm. take it back. And then she'd go back and she'd look at it, she'd look at the price tag and she comes back. And she said, Mom, is this much? I said, how much money do you have? She said, oh, I don't, I don't have it. I said, oh, you don't have it? I said, okay, so you think this is a reasonable price for this? And she's like, I, you know, I don't, I don't know. I said, I'm not buying it. It's, it costs too much, you know? Mm -hmm. Even if I had the money, I said, no, it's too much. Teaching them responsibility. I said, yeah, responsibility. Right. I yeah. said, it sale. She's like, I don't know. So to this day now, she has a budget. That's good. She knows what she's going to spend. Mm. And she, does, you know, it's like I said, it's not all about the name brand stuff. And all of them are that way. Yes. The, 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 even the boys. Uh, um, <laughs> that's good. I spending my money on no, that's, like, a, that's, <laughs> a, that's a good topic to talk yes. about because most people think, well, you know, because I'm a single mom, I feel guilty because the other parent is not in the home. Mm -hmm. it's, you know, I want to give my child everything. Yes. But what really, the best thing you could give your child is the foundation of Christ. Yes. Mm -hmm. And teaching them about finances. Teaching yes. them about the, the, as they call it, life essentials. Yes. You know, those life essential things that can get them through life without them breaking down in right. life. Right. <laughs> right? right? And so I love the fact 
that as a single mom, you didn't say, hey, listen, okay, go ahead. You know, you, you didn't have that guilt trip. Because now, so sometimes you can have a guilt trip as a oh, single yes. mom. Oh, yes. And there's been many times that I had the guilt trip like, oh, you know, I should have bought that. I should have gave it to them. But no, what happens is that when they get older, they have a foundation now. Mm -hmm. They have core values now. Yeah. They know what's good and what's not mm -hmm. good. Yes. And, you know, so I had that struggle of, you know, that guilt, but I had to trust God. I said, Lord, mm, you know, good. I, I have to trust you on this yes. because he's the one that has taken care of us. I'm telling you, when I say when there was no food, he would send somebody to the door mm. or he would send somebody that brought money. Wow. You know, and I didn't say anything to anybody, mm -hmm. but it would come. Amen. And so when you... <laughs> A praying mother, yes. a praying mother. Mm -hmm. Listen, a that. praying mother. I know my mom prayed for me many, Glory many times. God. Uh, but she would. I never saw her. I never heard her. But I knew she did. Yes. Because I'm. Let me tell you, I I haven't always been to the Sandra Jones. Yeah. I had my struggles. Okay. Yeah. I, I did the street life. I went and did. You know, went to the nightclub. So don't think yeah. that I'm perfect. No. I. There's a path That's that good. I had to take Thank to get yes. there. Yes. So I, I did the clubs. I did the drinking. I tried the smoking. Mm. I did all of that. And and I was a mom. Mm. I, you know, I had that first child. Yeah. But like I said, I did what I had to do to take care of her. And my mom and my dad say, listen, she belongs to us. Mm. Some of you dealing with that. Yes. You know, you had your first and yet they think you're not qualified mm. to take care of that child. So they think it's theirs. Don't be discouraged. Don't lose hope about it. Do what you need to do and get your child and do what you need to do from that point on. You know, it, they're just trying to be protective. They're trying to be protective of you and the grandbaby. So don't get mad with them. You know, y'all y'all hatch it out. Hatch it out and just go to God and pray about it. Amen. Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness. You might be out there and you might connect with one of these young women. I'm going to keep saying young. You know, ain't nobody right. old on this show, <laughs> okay. right? These are, these are young women who are teaching you about how God allowed them to come through all of their trials. Mm -hmm. These are true women with yes. real life, real life issues. Yes. This is, look, we are mothers and we're talking to other mothers yes, out there on this right. day about how we went through it and how God brought us out and I am so honored to just hear the the, the testimonies and, and the different stories that how God took you through this path but look look at where you're at now wow. and speaking of Lady V I mean, being a blended mom is a blessing within itself because a lot of people out there say, well, I'm more Lady V. I got a blended family. My husband had kids. Those his kids. <laughs> I got kids. Those my kids. And and he he deal with his kids. I deal I with my, my kids. Uh -uh, uh -uh. <laughs> so it was it, that right there within itself is wrong. You're divided yeah. already. Yeah. See, when you when you have a blended family. Either way, either blended in husband and wife uh, backgrounds or blended in children yes. background, you don't want to be divided either way. Mm -hmm. You want to make sure that you're coming together in unity yes. so that yes. God can move in your marriage. You have yes. to be one for yes. him to move, mm -hmm. not two individual people. Right. So, Miss Lady V. Come on and talk to, to, to those those blended mothers that say, hey, listen, you know, well, she says she loved her daughter just like that. I don't really love my daughter. My daughter just like that. And oh, that's his daughter. Talk, Come on, talk to us more about that blended family and how to get through to those individual people that 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 that's that's struggling with trying to blend this family. Wow. What I want to say about that is that um, once again, you know, like I spoke before, we have to make sure that we die to ourselves. And what I wanted mm. to touch bases on that for those who don't understand. What dying to yourself is, you know, a selfishness, mm. you know, wow. uh, 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 wanting to pretty much basically uh, uh, have it your way right away, you know, 
just like that. Have it, Charlie. And I had to realize that, you know, when you have the love for people, and I know that the Lord, he has love for his people. And I had to reach deep down, you know, there's many, you know, uh, nights I've cried, you know, because I was like, Lord, I'm, I'm young. I don't understand, you know, what's mm -hmm. happening with this situation. I've gotten myself into another situation. And, you know, uh, I, I'm, I'm, I needed the help. I needed to understand what did I need to do, you know, about it. So with me um, dying to myself, it allowed me to understand that Jesus loved me that same way. Mm -hmm. So I was Jesus. able to love Kayla that same way. Mm -hmm. and, and not only that, he had to bring back to my remembrance because I always said I wanted to have girls. So sometimes wow. we might think we're going right, to birth these right. girls out. You know, but a lot of times he would allow a person to come into your life to see would you be thankful for those Ooh. things that he give you Ooh. instead of you complaining, on, but be thankful lady. for what he has given you. And I appreciated it, you know, and I took grab onto it, even though I still cried many times because I still didn't understand God's plan. But all along, God was doing an amazing thing with this whole blended marriage you know like she spoke about because that is i mean it just did something to me just now with her saying that you know with bringing right. a marriage together it did my my husband you know his background was totally different from mine and that was a whole nother situation so i'm yep. like god you are doing way beyond i could ever imagine a thing but you're doing it to bring you glory yeah. you're bringing people together to show them that they could love one another, that they could be together as one, as a beautiful family yeah. that you've created and brought together. So I want to encourage, you know, those who could be dealing with situations where they might feel like, well, you know, that's not my son. That's not my daughter. I don't love them. I don't this. We have to remember that Jesus, he shared, he shared this, his precious blood for us on the cross. And that's what we have to remember. Like I was saying once again in the Lord's message where he spoke about my people mm -hmm. perish because of lack of knowledge. Wow. When we don't know that foundation, it ruins us. So it's important that we know what he said so that we'll get the training that we need because we need the training. If we oh, have yes. no training from babies, that's why he says to train mm -hmm. your child up in the way that he should go. Yes. And when he's old, he would not depart from it. Amen. But if you don't have that training oh, at the my. beginning, how could you have anything to come back yeah, to? Nothing. So we have to remember we have to remember that it's important that we draw near to the Lord. It's important that we be humble, humble enough to receive the love of the truth, even though it hurts sometimes yes, because indeed. we don't want to let go a lot of the things that we don't need mm -hmm. in our life. But we have to understand that it all starts back from the foundation, and the foundation is the Lord. Mm -hmm. We have nothing. We have nothing that we don't resolve back to him. So that's right. Just to encourage anybody that's dealing with anything, I don't care what kind of situation it is, I want you to know that you could just open up, be honest and true, you know, with the Lord and just open up and let them know that, Lord, I don't understand my life here. I didn't bring myself mm -hmm. here, but what is it that you would have me to do? And with him knowing the sincerity in your heart. And you doing exactly what he said to do because he said draw near to him and he would draw near to you. Amen. You using that small mustard seed of faith to do this, man, just imagine <laughs> the things that he could do in your life. So just know that, hey, and for everybody out there, you know, I look at it like this. Anybody who's willing to tell me the truth, tell someone else the truth, yeah. you know, you might be a mother, a father, a sister, a brother. That is love from the Lord. When yes. you're willing to share with me the truth, even sometimes it might hurt, but it's the truth. And that's what matters. Yes. So be blessed and just know that the Lord loves you. I love you. I know all of these yes. beautiful yes. women of God love you. Yes. That's why we're here today to share our side of the story so that you would know that it's more to it. But just know that all things, those who truthfully really believe in the Lord, all things are working together yes. for the good of those yes. who are yes. called according to God's purpose. Yes. So it's all working together, even though the portrait of that picture looks so Come distorted. On. It looks yes. so messed up. It looked like it could never be brought back together. But just know that God is doing something amazing. And when he finished with that portrait, it is going to be beautiful. Yes, right. it is. Thank <laughs> you. Oh, man.
Oh my goodness, if you're just jumping in and you was like, what is going on? A lot of beautiful stuff is going on here about how mothers come together in any facets of life and how we dealt with so many different issues and, um, and how God brought us out. And so our show is about to come to an end, but before we, we end, we're going to take a break and when we come back, we're going to wrap it up and we're going to talk to you mothers um, directly. We're going to talk more with Miss Audra Brooks and we're going to talk more about her organization and how you can reach her and how you can get the help as a mother that you need. We'll be right back. TVN Network. Well, this is the Mother's Day Special Edition, where if you're just now tuning in, we have been talking to some awesome women about motherhood. And so right now we're talking with Miss Audrey. Miss Audrey, thank you again for dropping those nuggets of wisdom earlier in the show. Tell us more about um, the blended of backgrounds for you and your husband as the same parents because your children did get raised in the same parent household so tell us more about how did you do it um even more so um and then talk to us more about your foundation as well yes and speaking on the blended family or the single family married family i just want people to understand that god has to be the foundation Wow. Your family cannot survive totally. I mean, you can go through the motions, mm -hmm, right. but if you truly want to survive, God has to be the foundation. And I know what I'm getting ready to say next. A lot of the families may not like it, but God has to be the foundation, yes. and that man has to be yes. right on the God. Right. Yeah, Jesus, right. come on and now. Come on, that, talk to him, Miss Audrey. woman is under the husband. Mm -hmm. And then you have the key. Yes, that's because right. sometimes, you know, you hear them say, oh, my kids come first. Mm. You know, no, no. Come on now, talk to us, Ms. Uh. Your husband, you know, uh, because I know when, um, a lot of times when I um, speak to people, I've been with my husband now 40 years. And um, it's, I've been doing this for 40 years. I fixed his plate. I bring it to him. I've been doing that forever. And when we were living with my kids, his plate was fixed first. Mm -hmm. Then they ate. And it's not that I'm uh, being subservient to him, but I'm honoring him for being a man of God. Amen. Right, right. That's oh. what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. I'm honoring him. Teach us today. So <laughs> I want you to know as a family, you have to put God first. Mm -hmm. Right. And then you have to submit to the husband. Mm -hmm. And when I say submit, I don't mean wait on him and do all that. But submit to him as he submits to Christ. Amen. And if he submitted to Christ, then you would not have any problems submitting to him. Mm -hmm. Because he's going to work unto the Lord. Mm -hmm. Amen. He's going to do what God has called him to do. Right. Amen. There will be no, oh, my husband out here running the streets. Or my husband doing this. But no, he submitted to God. So you don't have a problem as a wife submitting unto him. Right. So Amen. I just want you guys to know that. Put God first. And another thing, communicate. Mm. I don't care what it is. It can be something simple as I'm going to the grocery store. There has to be communication. Mm. You have to communicate. And when and my husband first got together... I didn't know how to communicate. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I didn't. I knew how to yell and scream. Come on, <laughs> come on now, Miss oh Audrey. I think we're in the same boat here. Yeah. I knew how to <laughs> yell because remember, I'm bringing in my background. Your background. I am bringing to him what I know. Mm. Right. So 
that's what I know. You yell, you scream to get your point across. Mm. <laughs> so I had to learn to do that. And, and I'm not ashamed to say I had to go to counseling Come on. because I wanted to be, uh, you know, in my family. I wanted my family together. Mm -hmm. So I went to counseling. So let me let me talk. Let me just cut cut you real quick because it just hit a, a soft spot in me. Real counseling. Mm -hmm. See, I don't know about you all, but a lot of African American culture families don't believe in counseling. Mm -hmm. And so when I was growing up, everything got swept underneath the rug. Yes. Nobody talked about their problems. Mm -hmm. Nobody. If you had a situation, it was covered up, mm -hmm. right? So, can you talk to us more about the counseling? Because that's what you—that's what yeah, you I'm do. A You're a Christian counselor, mm -hmm. and so one of the things that that you talked about was basically there might be women to say, "Well, my husband is not the man of our household because he don't do what I asked him to do, mm -hmm. so I got to do it myself." See, they one of those do it themselves kind of women. I was guilty. <laughs> Uh, you know, uh, it, I'm just being real. Like, this is open book. I was guilty. Right. Not that I was controlling my husband. It was more of, listen, when you come out of an old relationship mm -hmm. and then you had to pick up both mother and father, then, hey, there we go, right? Can you talk to us more about that? And can you talk to us more about childhood effects? Mm -hmm. as being a mother because like you said your background was yelling and screaming mm -hmm. that's what you knew but that was my background my mom yelled and screamed that's how we got a point across mm -hmm. boom it rubbed off on me that's how I get my point across I'm trying to get delivered from that mm -hmm. that's how we you know <laughs> right so it's just the, the it's just the thing that your childhood plays mm -hmm. a part Okay, in you your adulthood. So as mothers, mm -hmm. how can we change the generational curses of bringing up kids the way that we was doing? Can you expand? First of all, mm -hmm. you have to want to change. Right. Mm -hmm. And the Bible talks about being transformed mm -hmm. by the renewing of our mind. Oh, Jesus, come so on here. now. You have That's to right. want to change. Yes. And with me, initially, I didn't want to change because I was like, that's how I am, and, and that's just how I am. But when God sends you a man, my husband was sent to me because of who I was at that time. He knew that I needed healing. Mm. So my husband played a part in my healing. Mm. And when mm. we went to counseling, yes. oh. my husband was the one that found the counselor. Wow. He was the one that said, okay, Audrey, God sent you to me. We're not doing no divorce. Mm -hmm. I'm not going anywhere. Mm -hmm. So, you need some help. And that's what it is. That's what it is. <laughs> you need some help. <laughs> so, that was one of the best things I could have ever done in my life. And when you spoke about, mm -hmm. that's just who I am, I'm not going to change, remember, the oil flows down. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Come on. So to when God place. is pouring that oil, who does the oil hit it first? That the man. man. <laughs> mm. It was the man first. So remember, when you are not being submissive Jesus, or not honoring your you husband, Lord. you are cutting off your own blessings. Right. Right. The oil is cutting short. Mm. <laughs> it's stopping. And it took oh, me coming. years to realize that I was messing up my own blessings mm. because God sent Talk me an today. honorable, right. humble right. man. And when I began to submit and surrender first to God, mm -hmm. he showed me, hey, I sent this man to you. Mm -hmm. You need to honor him. Right. And that's when God began to open doors. Yes. And that took place because I had to go to counseling. Mm -hmm. yes. And counseling does not take away from the Word of God. Yes, no, They come together mm -hmm. and they integrate together. God uses us to heal His people. Yes. And as you spoke about, people perish for lack of knowledge. Mm -hmm. yes. If I'd have stayed in my ignorance, mm -hmm. 
then I would have perished mm -hmm. in my right. ignorance. Right. Mm. So counseling, and I'm not just saying that because I am a counselor, but God used me because I had no idea, I had no uh, plans to be a counselor. Mm -hmm. You can't yell at them if you're counseling no. them. <laughs> but, but God showed me that I was needed yes. for women because of the had things the that they were going through. And because as you stated, when I was growing up, no. What goes in the house stays, stays in, in the house. house. Nobody needs to know. Mm. And as a counselor, it's more about listening yes. to their cries mm -hmm. than mm -hmm. telling them what to do. Yes. I'm listening to what their heart is saying. Jesus, come mm. on. So I would advise anybody to uh, seek counseling, even if you don't think you need it. Go. Because there are some things laying dormant in you mm -hmm. that will manifest or be triggered at a time that you don't want it. Right, right, and, speaking, right. and speaking on that, some women might say, well, I want to go to counseling, but my husband don't want to go to counseling. What advice would you give them in this situation when you say, well, you got to submit to the man, but he's not wanting to go to counseling. What would, what would you tell them? The, uh, the change starts with you because if you go to counseling and you begin to change and allow God to transform you, then your husband, it's just like uh, a fire, it ignites, it catches right. on. Mm -hmm. He will see the change in you mm -hmm. because you cannot change your husband by trying to make him do something. Right. So you telling me that individual woman can go to counseling on her own. Mm -hmm. Yes, I went on my own. I'm just saying that because some people get lost in their husband and they make their husband their idols. Mm -hmm. See, it's not about making your husband your idol, you know, for those married couples out there or for that single woman. That single woman, God, is your husband. <laughs> let's, let's talk about that, right? And so for those married women, because me and my husband, we went through counseling and we still go to counseling even if we don't, if our marriage is good because we, we, we want the wisdom. Right. See, people already went through what you already went through. Mm -hmm. Get wisdom from someone else so you won't make the same mistakes, yes. right? And so when, one of the things that we were taught was you're two individual people. You're coming together as one. Mm -hmm. And so God got you on an assignment. He got you on an assignment. And God just happened to put you guys together so y'all can do his assignment, right? right? But a lot of women don't move unless they husband move in a sense of... Like getting help for them. For themselves, yeah. You're not going to counseling for marriage counseling. You're going to individual counseling for yourself. For yourself. Mm -hmm. If you heard what Miss Audrey said, you right. fix yeah. you. Mm -hmm. right. And then when you fix you, then God yeah, will fix yeah. your marriage. Because right. this is the problem that most women have is that we're trying to blame our husbands for the mistakes in the marriage. Mm -hmm. Or we're trying to blame, mm -hmm. uh, uh, like if you're a single mom, you try to blame everybody else but, but yourself. yourself. That's right. <laughs> and it right. goes back. Right. It go, a lot of people don't realize uh, most of the things that we're dealing with as grown-ups is a result of what happen in our adolescence yeah. mm -hmm. and our young age. Mm -hmm. Say that again. So, therefore, you got to go back and visit go back. Go back. your uh, childhood go and, back. Leave and leave what you don't need. Yes. Ooh, Ooh, that's 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 come good. on now. Yeah. 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 You leave, leave it. That. And you got to <laughs> forgive, forgive. That's right. and forget. And I'll be saying, well, I can't forget it. Well, you know what? Forgive and let the memory go. Right. Because if you keep dwelling on the memory, then how it. much of forgiveness did, did. have you done? Right. Yeah. You know, so you have to forgive and let go. Mm -hmm. Give it to God. God says, cast your cares on him mm -hmm. because he cares for you. Right. So casting your cares means everything that happened to you, you give it to him. Mm -hmm. And I had to do that. And I'm a living witness of what you just did. Mm -hmm. I had to fix me. I had so much hurt inside of me that I had hurt that that people caused me that they didn't even know they caused me mm -hmm. who out there like that today right, right. I had hurt that that 
my parents probably had caused me and I'm holding all of this animosity, all of these grudges, all of this stuff towards them and they don't even know it. They live in their life and you mad at them because they live in their life and, they, and you and, and because they didn't say I'm sorry. And you don't and they don't even know what they did to to sorry. you to say I'm sorry. Yeah. You yeah. got to deal with those issues yeah. Yeah. in your adolescent years so that you can move into your adulthood effectively. Yes. yes, and you know, Candace, <laughs> just to quickly touch some the bases on what she just said quickly, it's important that we be transparent. Yes. It is very, very oh, vital yes. to our life that we be transparent because when we're like that, then yes. we're able to be open to God. And when we're willing to be open and exposed to those things that he already know that's going on with us, mm -hmm. then the healing can take place. Oh, come the on. The healing can take place. That's why he says... He tells us to encourage each other in his right. word, yes. but he also said confess your sins to one another. Right. Yes. So it's, it's, it's important that we be open, open to him, open to, you know, just open, you know, just yes. let him know what's going on. Exactly. You, know, you don't have to go there all prepared, you know, just go there as, as you, you are, are. Come on and now. just let the Lord That's know right. that I'm hurting. I'm going through. I don't know what I'm dealing with. I don't know even why I'm here. What is it that I'm needing to do? But be transparent, yes. open to him. You know, be truthful. Yes. Be truthful about what's going on. And 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 one of the things that you said is that your, your organization is called Women Empowering Women. Women. Yes. We have to empower each other. Yes, yes. So, grandmas out there, if you watching this show, those that younger generation that you done gave up on, you don't give up on them. Right. Pray for them. Mm -hmm. Empower them. Give them, even though you might think that they're not listening, still do your part mm -hmm. and impart into them something that they might need for the future. And, and, and for those mothers out there, you might think your children are not listening to you, your children hate you, and all of that other stuff. Mm -hmm. It is time for you to cover your children. It is time. Where, where are you standing with God? Mm -hmm. Because uh, your children is a reflection of you. Mm -hmm. So where are you at with God? How is it that your children, not saying, oh, well, my child did this. No. Something in there is missing, and you need to find the missing piece. Mm -hmm. Something has happened to where there's some disconnect going on. Well, my child is, nope, you're letting the world raise your children. You got to take back control of your home and be the praying mother, grandmother that we know that you are. And so, Miss Audrey, mm -hmm. we, we're about to, to, to come to an end, mm -hmm. but please tell us how can someone um, find or your your organization how can they get in contact with you if they they watching the show and they say man i need miss audrey's help i need mm -hmm. i need those resources that miss audrey has how can they contact you okay if you are looking for me and you need a counselor because remember uh may is mental health awareness mm. month and uh i encourage you if you feel like that you are sinking and uh, you don't know where to go. You don't know what to do. Please reach out. If not to me, reach out to somebody. Mm -hmm. But you can contact me at audreybrooks.org. And for my nonprofit organization, we have so many uh, master classes and uh, tools to help you grow uh, personally and professionally. And all of our, uh, everything that we do, is offered free to the community. Amen. And you can reach out at www.inc.net. That's www.inc.net. And I encourage you, if you are a teenager or even an older person that is looking to bring change into your life, reach out to us and attend some of our master classes that we have. Mm -hmm. Awesome. And you might say, oh, what is that master class? See, you got the call in order to find out. Right? And, and sh trust me, I know what they are, and you don't want to miss them. And I'm telling you, those are life essentials that you need. Miss Audrey and her foundation and organization definitely have what you need. All of these young ladies, if you have said, I connected with Miss Sandra's story, I'm a single mom.
mom or Miss Lady B story. I'm a blended mom and I just want to talk to her more. Uh, either one of these ladies, myself or Miss Audrey, please c contact in NDTVN Network and we can definitely get you connected mm -hmm. with these young ladies so that you can change your life. You're not alone and no, you're not, not out there by yourself. You have women empowering women yes. here <laughs> with you. And so to all the ladies out there on this special day, happy Mother's Day. And we thank you for watching this Mother's Day special with us. All the mothers out there, happy Mother's Day.